Over the past year, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected nearly everyone in the world, from children to the elderly, public sector employees to private business owners, and of course, frontline healthcare workers and medical staff. More recently, athletes at all levels of sport have begun to train and compete again, and unfortunately, despite the best efforts from medical and athletic therapy staff, league and team owners and organizers and administrators, many of them have contracted the coronavirus in the process. What are the acute and chronic consequences of COVID-19 in athletes? What does the science say about short and long-term recovery and return to play? And how can athletes optimize their training and recovery post-exposure? That's what we'll be discussing today on the Soccer Fitness video blog. Hello, I'm Richard Bucciarelli. This video is brought to you by Soccer Fitness and Speed Training. Please remember to like the video, comment on it, share it, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss an update. Also, before we start, if you have any symptoms of COVID-19 or feel sick in any way, get tested, speak to your physician, and make sure you follow the guidelines set forth by your local and federal government to keep you and everyone around you safe. Now let's get started. While the coronavirus seems to be affecting different populations, including athletic populations, in slightly different ways, one primary area of concern has emerged in recent medical research, and this is the potential for chronic respiratory illnesses, including bronchitis and pneumonia, in athletes who are returning to train following recovery from COVID-19. These respiratory illnesses have also been shown to lead to the development of respiratory tract infections in patients, including young people and athletes. And athletes who contract the virus are typically required to quarantine or self-isolate for 10 to 14 days where they won't be doing any high-intensity training during that time. Unfortunately, this lack of high-intensity training over one to two weeks will very likely lead to detraining in which an athlete's aerobic fitness levels can significantly decrease. A recent article published in the Frontiers in Immunology Journal suggested that returning to training and competition can continue with minimal risk of illness, provided that there are no significant increases in training load. So what does this mean for the average athlete or coach? Basically, once an athlete has recovered from COVID-19 and has been medically cleared to participate in exercise, their training load, that is the volume and intensity of their training, must be planned with small incremental increases from one week or cycle to the next, and close monitoring must be done both of the mechanical factors relating to the load itself, for example, the amount of time, the number of repetitions of exercises, etc., and the athlete's physiological responses to the load, heart rate, rating of perceived exertion, etc. If you followed this blog during the past year, then you know I've done several videos explaining everything you need to know about training load, and there's a link to those videos here and in the video description below. Because 10 to 14 days of inactivity is very similar to the amount of time off that athletes might have from other training or game-related injuries, for example, a ligament sprain or a muscle strain, the same modifications to training load that are typically used when recovering from other injuries with similar periods of inactivity may be also used in athletes when recovering from COVID-19. A simple way for coaches and fitness coaches working with athletes recovering from COVID-19 to determine how best to manage training load in this case is to use the Acute Chronic Workload Ratio, or ACWR for short. The acute workload in this formula is the training load on a given day, for example, today, whereas the chronic workload is the average training load over a specified period of time, usually two to three weeks. To help explain this concept a bit better, have a look at the figure here, reprinted from a paper by Gabbett in 2016. In it, you can see that the ACWR must be kept between 0 to 8 to 1 and 1 to 3 to 1 in order for most reduced risk of injury. To put this in layman's terms, 
it means that the daily workout must not be 30% higher than the chronic workload, otherwise the risk of injury is significantly increased. If it's less than 20% of the chronic workload, then the athlete's fitness does not improve. So between that range is optimal for athletes to improve but not get hurt. For more information about exactly how to plan, calculate, monitor, track, and manage training load, you can also check out the links to my previous article about this topic in the video description below. So, to conclude, no long-term studies have been conducted about return to play after COVID-19 yet because it's only been around for about one year, but these simple guidelines are a great place for coaches and athletes to start. If athletes don't show abnormal findings from cardiac imaging following 10 to 14 days of quarantine, then they may return to play and train with modifications and decreases in training load. And specifically, plan, monitor, and adjust the acute to chronic workload ratio or ACWR and keep it within the 0.8 to 1.3 range to minimize the risk of injury in return to play protocols. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please remember to like the video, share it, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you never miss an update. We'll see you next time and until then, keep reaching your soccer fitness goals.